Hey everybody and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. My name is Sid. I'm a high school senior interested in programming, computer science, productivity, math, machine learning, and a bunch of other things. And I make videos about all those topics here on my YouTube channel. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about CTFs, Capture the Flag Contest, and why you should be participating in them. Keep in mind, I'm a beginner myself, so a lot of these tips will be really suited towards beginners. If you're somebody that's advanced in cybersecurity, this probably won't be of much help to you. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. Cybersecurity is important and there's no real dodging that fact. If you're a programmer, you're going to have to worry about the security of the applications you're building at some point and all the time, really. So it's important to get your hands wet in the field. I found a great way to do this is through Capture the Flag Contest or CTFs. Um, and now no way are CTFs very representative of the day-to-day -day work of a cybersecurity professional, but they're a great way to get introduced to the world of cybersecurity and start learning some basic concepts. So first of all, let's talk about what a CTF actually is. Basically, a CTF is a cybersecurity contest, um, and there are three main types of CTFs. One, you have Jeopardy competitions, um, which are a collection of different tasks or problems you have to solve sorted into different categories, and I'll talk about those categories later. Um, another type of CTF is an attack defense CTF, which as the name suggests, um, is where each team gets their own host or some sort of application to protect, and then they have to find vulnerabilities in the other team's um, application and attack that, and that's how that CTF operates. Then there are other CTFs that are mixed, and they take elements from Jeopardy CTFs and attack uh, defense CTFs. In today's video, I'll mostly be talking about um, Jeopardy CTFs because that's what I have my little bit of experience in. So with Jeopardy CTFs, you have a lot of different categories that you'll find tasks in, and these categories include things like web exploitation, um, binary manipulation, reverse engineering, forensics, and cryptography. And the goal is to solve these tasks, and in solving those tasks, you find flags, which is where the name Capture the Flags comes from, and you submit those flags, and if the flag you found is the correct flag, you'll get points for that question, and you'll get ranking for that competition based on how many points you have. And a good thing to do is actually understand what all of the categories that I just mentioned actually are, so let's go into them one by one so you can understand where you can get started, and then we'll talk about where you can actually get started participating in these CTFs. So let's talk about the prerequisites that you need to actually be able to participate in CTS before we talk about the specific categories of problems. First of all, you're going to need to know how to use the Linux terminal. You're going to need to know your basic Linux commands because Linux is probably going to be the operating system you're going to use to participate in these Capture the Flag contests. You're also going to need to know some sort of scripting language like Python or Bash. Um, I used Python for a lot of the problems that required scripting because Python has a lot of cool uh, cybersecurity libraries that make things easier for you to participate, uh, that make things easier for you in Capture the Flag Contest. You're also going to have to know, you know, some of the basis of cryptography, so perhaps learning about different number bases and converting between those might help. Um, a little bit frivolous, but know some things about cryptography before you start participating in CTFs. You're also going to need to know JavaScript for web exploitation problems. Um, you're going to need to know the basics of JavaScript as well as the basics of SQL for things like SQL injections and cross-site uh, uh, attacks because that's an important part of uh, web exploitations and capture the flag contest. It's also advisable to you know have some sort of Unix-based operating system uh, for you to work off of, um, either uh, through a virtual box or maybe you're just dual booting uh, or using Ubuntu or some other Linux distro as your main daily driver. It's advisable to do that because it makes things a lot easier. So let's talk about the first category of problems that you'll find in many CTFs um, and possibly one of the most prevalent ones, cryptography. Uh, cryptography is exactly what you would think it would be. Cryptography challenges consist of exactly what you think they would. Um, you know, code breaking. Given some sort of ciphertext, can you decode it and get the original message? Can you do the opposite? Um, these types of problems usually involve an encrypted message um, that you have to decrypt and to prepare this for these it's best to learn about different types of encryption and then how to break those encryptions. Um, some common methods that you'll find in beginner entry level CTFs are Caesar ciphers, vignette, uh, visionaire ciphers, um, RSA encryption, and to learn how to break those, uh, I'll leave a link in the description as long as to a uh, as as well as an art link to an article that I wrote containing a lot of resources that you can follow 
to get started with CTFs. And I would also just suggest just checking out Live Overflow and Josh, uh, John Hammond's uh, YouTube channels because those guys are really good at cybersecurity and CTFs and they have great material to get started with. Another category of pro problems that you'll usually find are binary exploitation. And binary exploitation, uh, binary exploitation, sorry, usually involves finding bugs in a, finding vulnerabilities in a program and then exploiting those vulnerabilities to obtain the flag that you're looking for. Um, and typically you're gonna be using this, typically you're gonna be finding vulnerabilities in Linux executables um, and then using some sort of uh, shell script to exploit those vulnerabilities and obtain the flag. This is a very broad field um, and I'll leave, again, leave links to learning more about it in the description, as well as uh, recommending that you check out Jod Hammond's and Live Overflow's YouTube channels because those are very helpful. Another important section of CTF problems is forensics. Forensics involves a lot of different types of problems. Some of them are things like file format analysis. If you have a file, then uh, if you have a file that's corrupt, can you fix the file so that you can get the flag or do the opposite to obtain a flag? These are common types of problems. Another common type of problem is being able to look at the memory of a system and seeing if you're able to get any information from that. Other things include packet capture analysis and things like steganography, which I won't get into now because I'll make this video very long. Um, but again, I'll leave resources for that in the description down below, as well as a link to a longer uh, blog post article that I wrote um, that contains a bunch of other resources. Another big category of problems are web exploitation problems. Uh, this involves you exploiting vulnerabilities in web applications to find the flag that you need. And you can do this through a multitude of ways, including SQL injection, um, cross-site uh, cross scripting, directory traversal, um, just injecting malicious code with JavaScript, and a bunch of other things. Um, and for this, you'll need a pretty good knowledge of JavaScript and uh, some knowledge of web development, and you'll probably have to practice these problems quite a bit. Um, they aren't as easy as to directly jump into as cryptography problems, um, but with quite a bit of practice, you'll be able to get good at this and also learn a lot of valuable skills. Another common category of problems are reverse engineering problems. With this, you'll be given a program and then you have to reverse engineer it. Um, a lot of the language, there's quite a few languages that these programs are usually written in, but the few that I've seen, uh, a lot of are assembly programs, which is a bit annoying, uh, but you'll be able to understand it after attempting to learn assembly and learn the basics of it after a few times. C and Java. Um, a lot of the times it's not necessary that they give you the source code itself. Sometimes they'll just give you an executable and you'll be able, you'll have to decompile it using some sort of decompiler tool. Um, one of the tools that's very uh, widespread for decompiling things is Ghidra uh, by the NSA. Um, and you can go download that for free um, just by searching for it. I'll leave a link to it in the description as well as more resources for learning about reverse engineering and web exploitation. Um, this is one of my favorite, this is I think my favorite category because it's just really cool to be able to reverse engineer a program. Um, I think there's also other decompilers available, but the one that I use is Ghidra by the NSA. Now that we've talked about the different categories of CTFs, let's talk about some beginner friendly CTFs that you can get started with today as soon as possible. One of them is Pico CTF. It's run by Carnegie Mellon University and it's mostly intended for high school students, um, but a lot of the problems are great interest for beginners and the problems are available year round, or at least they used to be. And I think they just had a recent contest that finished up, so those problems should be available now as well. These problems are really good um, to get started with CTFs because they have them in sorted order of difficulty so that you'll attempt the easier problems first. And as you finish the easier problems, you'll unlock the harder problems to work on so you'll be able to build upon the skills that you're learning. Another one is uh, over the wire. This is great for beginners to learn and test their skills. Um, then you also have uh, CTF time, which is just the resource where you can find a bunch of CTFs to participate in. There's also HSCTF, which is high school CTF. Um, so, you know, it's good for beginners to participate in. And of course, there's other online resources like Try Hack Me that improve uh, your cybersecurity and CTF skills. I'd also suggest watching John Hammond's videos um, because he does a lot of cool things with CTFs um, and he has a very extensive uh, list of tutorials that you could follow to get good with. Some other resources that you might want to take a look at 
are things like Trail of Bits, which has a lot of good information about CTFs, um, CTF 101, which is a complete beginner's guide to uh, CTFs. And I'll leave a few more links in the description, but there's a ton of resources available on the internet to start learning the tools you need to succeed in CTFs. And I think you should be doing CTFs right now, even if you are, a, you know, even if you're not super interested in cybersecurity, it's a great way to sharpen your skills. So that's all I have to, to say about cybersecurity and capture the flag contest. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing. It'll really help me out. And if you have any questions, comment down below or get in touch with me on Instagram or Twitter. Links to those in the description. And you can also join my Discord to talk to like-minded individuals and also pester me with suggestions on videos I should make. Um, and that's all I have to say. If you have any suggestions at all, I highly encourage you to join my Discord, like I just said. And other than that, have a great day and see you all in the next one.